Yo, what's up? Today, I want to talk about plug-in hybrids. So there's one thing I need to explain to you guys. Uh, during the 1000 kilometer challenge, many, many people ask me, why didn't you plug in while you had the food break? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna explain how shit works. So, uh, these plug-in hybrids, they have this onboard charger and it's only 3.5 kilowatt. And when you are plugging in, uh, at you know, let's say you plug in at home or at the charging station, what there is that there is AC alternating current. The battery needs DC direct current, and the onboard charger is the one that takes the whole conversion into DC. And it's only 3.5 kilowatts. So even if you have 22 kilowatt available, the charger cannot take more. That's how it is. So during my uh, food break, I would get about 1.6 kilowatt hour of energy into the battery. And how much is that? It equals to about seven kilometers of range, a real world range based on that trip. And seven kilometers of range is really nothing. So let me explain then. You know, when I did the refueling, I also saw the whole refueling. It took uh, 37 seconds to refuel 21.5 liters. And I worked out that based on the consumption for that trip, that equals to 34,000 kilometers per hour of refueling speed. Yeah. And then uh, it will actually take only 0.7 seconds to fill up seven kilometers of range. It's just a tiny bit there. You know, range is really not a problem in these fossil cars. And I had to stop anyway because I had to pee. So I stopped twice every three, three and a half hours. And then you might as well fill it up anyway. So, and also another problem is that if I charge there, uh, I could have charged there, but I, I had to park outside of McDonald's and then I had to pull out my cable. I had to plug it in and then I had to pull out the app, Fortum app, and then start charging. And then I had to walk over to Chop Chop. And then afterwards I had to walk back and then reverse the whole process. So that would take maybe three, four extra minutes just to save 0.7 seconds. You see why it's pointless. So on long trips, it's pointless to plug it in there unless you're staying there very long, let's say on a hotel or whatever. Then that actually, it helps. So I actually claim that plug-in hybrids, they should have a bigger onboard charger. That 3.5 kilowatt or 3.7 kilowatt onboard charger is a joke. So for example, uh, I don't know, I've seen a couple of people, they, they actually plug in and charge at public charging stations. And uh, the extreme case here as Fortum in Norway and Sweden, they take one krone per minute, which is about uh, 10 cents per minute. And it's purely minute based and you get access to 22 kilowatt, but you can only utilize 3.5 or 3.7 or those, but you still pay for the full price. Yeah. And then uh, to charge uh, for an hour, you co it costs you six euros per hour roughly and you get only 24 kilometers of range. <laughs> and you have to pay uh, roughly 0.25 euros per kilometer or 25 cents per kilometer. And then if you just fuel it with fossil, yeah, dinosaur juice, it will cost you only six cents per kilometer. You see, it's almost pointless. It's actually pointless to charge it up there, I guess, uh, unless you care for the environment. But um, yeah, and then uh, what about, but it's not pointless when you plug in at home, right? No, but at home is a different scenario because at home you, you have to park there anyway. And then the plug is right there. You just plug it in and then you're usually parked there for a long time and then you don't have to authenticate with RFID or whatever. So that's fine. But at shopping malls or public places, I wouldn't bother if I had a plug-in hybrid because you have to, again, pull out the cable, RFID, blah, blah. And it depends how long you stay there. But if you stay there for, let's say, half an hour, you might get, like I mentioned, or seven kilometers of range. And then for one hour, you might get four, 14, 15 kilometers of range. That's almost pointless. But okay, but what about some places you have free charging, like shopping malls? Yeah, you should plug it in, right? Well, but how much money do, are you saving? Because in Norway, you will usually get around, when I mean, you get free juice equivalent to four nook per hour. <laughs> well, I guess if you're Sundman, you will take it. I'll take it for no power. I'll take it. <laughs> and for the rest of Europe, where the, the juice is more expensive, you would usually get around one euro per hour in free electricity. But you see, it would be better if the onboard charger was faster. It was at least 7.4 kilowatt or 11 kilowatt or even 22 kilowatt, because then it means that you can hoard more free juice. 
Yeah, and then you might come back to the car after just one hour and you have a full battery in that hybrid. You can drive 50 kilometers, hmm? wouldn't that be great? And I should also mention that there are some cars with has DC fast charging. For example, the Mitsubishi Outlander has DC fast charging, it has 13 kilowatt hour battery, and it, I think it can take around 20 kilowatt DC. It has Chalmo plug though. And also there's a Mercedes, fairly new one that comes out with CCS plug and it can take DC fast charging. I don't remember how much, it was 30 kilowatt DC something. I guess I want to test that one. And I might test the, the BMW with 24 kilowatt hour battery, but that's most of the cars I will test. So, so many people will be like, oh Bjorn, finally, can you test the, the Honda? Can you test the Volvo? Can you test the, no, 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 no. Hold, hold your horses, hold your horses. Stop there, it's right there. Talk to the hand. Out of focus. There, there, there. Talk to the hand. You see what I'm sitting in? I'm sitting in a Tesla. This is full, full electric. I still believe that full electric is the best way to go. If you had the money, the infrastructure, the space, whatever, you should still go full electric. I, I still think that many people today, they are reluctant is that the word? They're reluctant to change. They they claim that eh, I can't do it. I still need fossil. I still believe that they can go. They are. They think there that they are Mexican, but they are actually Mexican. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Okay. I'm not gonna. Okay. I'm gonna get so many hate comments now. But no, I will not test a bunch of fossils. It was just a few one that I will test. That's gonna be it. Okay. So, but what about these fossils if they start? fast charging. I'm not sure if that's where welcome because um, I don't think these fossils should or they, they should fast charge because most of the time it's convenient to just to just plug in an AC while you're shopping. Uh, like like uh, most of the cases you just you are busy shopping or working out or doing something else anyway and then you can just fast, uh, slow charge and it's cheaper to do it that way because mostly the, the faster the charge in general, the more expensive it is. Unless it's free, but you know, it's it's free only for a limited time, like a little, whatever, you know, eventually they're gonna take money for that, so yeah. But of course, if you have free charging, yeah, you'll get free juice. Just, you're just driving and you might just be degrading the battery a little bit faster. But I think that um, eventually um, people might not like that you take up a fast charging spot because a, a tiny leaf needs to fast charge. There's no other option. But a fossil uh, plug-in hybrid can refuel and then whatever. So the, the whole uh, charging up the fossil is just a bonus for the environment, maybe also for the wallet. But it depends because many cases it's actually not worth it. I saw um, um, a Mitsubishi Outlander fast chart at Grand Contact the other day. I'm not sure if it's worth it. Uh, I think it actually... Uh, Price-wise is more or less the same as refueling, but I guess slightly better for the environment. But they don't give a shit about the environment, do they? <laughs> yeah, but um, so, you know, what I, what I suggest is that car manufacturers from now on, they should have 11 kilowatt onboard charger on the fossil, I mean, yeah, the plug-in hybrids, or even, even if they can offer 22, that would even be better. But we will see if car manufacturers will listen to me. They're not going to listen to this idiot here. <laughs> yeah, but I also believe that EVs should have that. For example, this one. I would gladly pay 1,000 euro extra on MC Hammer to get 22 kilowatt onboard charger. Yeah, you, yeah, okay. You don't have to force people to buy 22 kilowatt onboard charger, but for people who know what it is, they will love it, like me. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something. <laughs> so thank you for watching and talk to you later.